live on radar. This hurts my ears. I will not claim to understand it. I will not begin to accept it. Maybe I'm just too lowbrow and narrow-minded. Remember Devo? Devo was fun. I understood Devo. Arab on radar is a little like Devo, but infinitely more so. More strange, more repetitive, more pretentious, more noisy, more distorted. More unlikely to require an entire bottle of aspirin for each listening. But unlike Devo, Arab on radar is less fun, less pop, less humorous, less accessible, and definitely less likely to succeed in any tangible way. The vocals are distorted and usually consist of a few lyrics repeated as if to make a point. The music is a repetition of abrasive sounds that ends up sounding like an air raid siren at the wrong speed with a lot of other stuff thrown in to make it sound more confused. Assuming Arab on Radar has something important to say, I doubt if anyone would consider it important enough to suffer through listening to it. Alyssa Dennis. Well, that's what I think of that interview. I said burn it. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> We're gonna get in trouble for this. Um, my name is Mr. Type A. I play guitar. <laughs> myself Mr. CD clinical depression and I play guitar one of the guitars six string guitar <laughs> obsessive compulsive disorder obsessive compulsive disorder I play the drums Mr. Potty Mouth, I do all the dancing and singing. make a point again about Arab on Radar has always kind of like excelled at just like the, the packaging and I think like the original tape is, a, is an excellent example just in terms of like generally speaking the packaging is quality. high quality <laughs> Because 
where they were coming from musically was so alien. <laughs> found a box of all this crazy stuff like all this all these all original lyrics like when i first yeah, yeah. attempted to write the lyrics like i would sit with the you know headphones and like kind of write whatever came out and it's all white out <laughs> can you believe white out it was like a white out it would be like a line and then white out and then xxxx white out and then from there like you know all the songs grew but i remember the other night Looking it over, just get cracking up like, I know it's fucking white though. <laughs> you know, now I have a laptop and I'm exactly. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> that is like, you know, think about Rough Day at the Orchestra was recorded with her. We did those songs, but like, you know, once the record came out, I mean, you know, she was done. I mean, she yeah. was gone. It was like, it was before the record was even out. You know, so. Oh, man. <laughs> there it goes. There it is. Airbnb on radar was so in everybody's face. And I thought they were pretty um, surprisingly professional in spite of the fact that they came, came off as so unprofessional and so raw. A lot of people just really didn't jive on that. Um, like, a, like a lot of people just really want technique and precision. And Airborne Radar just, just never delivered on that end, you know, like as, as far as like... What, what am I talking about here? Um, Honestly, one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to be in a band was to travel. Because yeah. I was, I, I think we all come from very low, like low income, moderate income families, and all the places that we've seen, we would have never seen without being oh, playing no. music. Could, no, and that was forty-eight no. states, right? Didn't we go to forty or yeah. forty-seven? Yeah, we, we've states been through, 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 through in like every country in, in Europe. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty an amazing feat. Like when you look back on your life and you're like. Uh, you know, considering there were people that even left their own state, but we were like, we're fucking degenerate, low white trash, fucking assholes. We're gonna see the world, oh. and we we went out and did it, and that was pretty fucking cool, man. This is why we're not allowed out of the country. <laughs> we we so smart. Oh, let's go to England, and like we took like we went to Dover. And we went to the thing, and the guy dropped us off. We're like, oh, you know, take the van on the ferry. Pretend, yep. And we're like, all these four guys all dressed like fucking oh, guys in bands. Trying to sneak in. You trying know? to sneak in. Yeah. And I remember John, was it was the total opposite. He was just like, top of the morning to you. Like this offensive, like, <laughs> to <a> British <laughs> customs. Like, top of the morning to you. Know? Like, it wasn't even British. And the guy was like, like totally was just like fucking open the gates for him, you know. And then we're just like, hey, <laughs> and and we got like, like you oh, over man, here, you totally, over here, and yeah. they tore us up. Remember? Ah, she's not smart, oh, you okay? Well, the second time she got pregnant, she thought we had to get married again, you know? <laughs> It was 
Hans and I told yeah. we could have gone to Munich and yeah. drank steins of beer and had an awesome time. I, I was like, it was a choice between Oktoberfest or going to Dachau fucking <laughs> concentration camp yeah. in the rain. Dachau. First of all, we drove to Dachau, the only day we could get off, and there was torrential downpours. So we walked yeah, around so Dachau, awesome. the most depressing place so. on planet Earth, while it was pouring rain. We were just like, must see this, must see this. No, but it was like, remember we pulled, we parked the van, and then you had to like get on like a bus or something. We Yep. Got, got on oh, a yeah, bus and yeah. we took a train yeah. <laughs> and we, and we, did, we took a train somewhere else like thinking oh, yeah, is this Dachau? Is this Dachau's Dachau? really depressing yeah and then we kind of get yeah. off the train and we're like where the fuck is Dachau? and then finally we ask them and they're like you were just at Dachau <laughs> who's gonna step up? you we are outside of Dresden <laughs> in some kind of hotel. <laughs> Just kidding, does They put out like all this luxurious brie and bread and stuff and we just like grab a whole loaf and like cut it in half and like jam all this brie in it eat a grinder and shit like, <laughs> like, like so grinder. inappropriate that was so like culturally wrong to yeah. do that we scheduled to play and but it was the same night that the uh, olympics were on and Slovenia has never won anything in the Olympics, but this was that's right. The, man, the that was male so rowing <laughs> team was actually gonna win. So like, yeah. all these people were gathered around this like little black and white TV, like you know, 150 people just watching and like that's total right. patriotism oh, and yeah. total nationalism. And, and then we played at we had to postpone when we were playing until it was over. <laughs> and then we, we basically played, and then they were like. All right, play again. And we played our same <laughs> set again that night. The thing about the, the touring too is like you like you go to all these places you never go in your life, and you can never stop and fucking see anything. The Waco was the first time, and you were like, you stuck to your guns, man. I remember yeah. that too. We were all like, yeah. oh, we gotta sleep, we gotta do this, and you're like, come on, man, Waco, Waco. I'm like, Waco, like. And then I was like, geez, man, like, I'm so glad you fucking talked to that. I think I did. Well, the first time I ever saw him, he was riding away in a sheriff's car. He's sitting behind the deputy. And I'm looking at him and thinking, who is this long-haired hippie, right? And I find out this is David Koresh. Uh He had just shot George Rogan. He just wounded George. And uh, that formed my opinion right there. It was, all, it was just fucking Harley. Like, no, yeah. you figure somebody even wants no. to have it. I remember I found out I had a bullet casing. There was bullet casings. Yeah. There was the FBI, like, there was, like, the... The hazmat suits, the face mask, like yep. that was what was fucking so crazy about it. I mean, what is that crazy woman? Yeah, I have all the that woman. That was woman. fucking <laughs> beautiful. Dude, he's a picture of David Koresh. People follow us. He's a, wow. This is the shit. I actually fucking still have this shit. The bullets. Nice behind. man. Oh, nice. Wow. I don't know what <laughs> this is. <laughs> Piece of hash. Smoke <laughs> it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, man. Like, this should be evidence, this is, man. This you is know? some kind of, like, plastic explosive shit. Pussy right there. It's written all over his face right there. He's thinking about pussy. And this guy right here is thinking about the same thing. You know what I'm saying? He's thinking about. Ooh, let's see. Look at that smile on his face, right? And then there's this guy right here. He's thinking about a big old fat long cock. Woo! I want to put a cock in my asshole. Let me tell you about it. And this guy's thinking. Those fucking assholes are way too fucking stoned to drive. I gotta fucking drive it on the road. I'm gonna be really pissed about this.
I lost Steve in my tail of horse and panty holes here. <laughs> this is what they call the day. Fuck me! That's what it's saying. Fuck, fuck, fuck me! Fuck, fuck, fuck me! My pussy's wet! Oh, that was awesome. You know what this trick is like? Show. We thought we were so late, like 10:30. No. We yeah. show up to like the Red Roof Inn or whatever it was called. We're Dixie like, Tavern. Dixie Tavern. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're like, where is everybody? What the fuck? Finally, at like 11 o'clock, this crazy girl walks in, tripping her face up. Oh, the show won't start till like 1, 12:30. Yeah. Like what? Exactly. Then like we're That's like, the yeah. Rainbow Fanny Pack shows yeah. up in a flatbed <laughs> truck, jump out. They, there's like eight awesome. guitars, play the show, then we play the show, ended at four in the, four in the morning. So yep. And she's like, okay, we, we're gonna set up now. I'm gonna pay you an electric Triscuits because the show didn't do so well. We're like, <laughs> electric, what? What? Yeah, they're Triscuits dipped in acid. We can't pay you in money. So we had to take acid for like the show, <laughs> so we couldn't get paid. <laughs> then, <laughs> then it was so, <laughs> then we partied at the guy's house. It was so fucking hot. Then remember we went out and slept on the van? We're on the van's roof. We finally get to sleep, and all of a sudden we had this loud, crazy bang. Yeah. And it's the girl who booked the show tripping her face up, she drives off the road, smashing into something. And she's like screaming yeah. hysterically, she's like, I gotta go to court, I gotta go to court. Tripping her fucking face oh, wow. off. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. Remember we'd play a show, you'd rock the stage, and then you had nowhere to stay and you'd sleep on the stage. Remember how many times we yeah, slept on the stage? I remember Ipsilani, we slept on the stage in Ipsilani, and it was like, you know, play the show, rock the show, you guys, you know, like, wow, holy shit, this band, you know, you're like delivering your art and this and that. And then you sleep on the stage and then like, shit's going on. And before I knew it, I look up and Jeff is sitting in a chair and someone is sculpting a bust of his head <laughs> for like seven, at the club we played at, and already did our thing for like seven hours until sunup. She's yeah. sculpting it, and by the end of it, it was Jeff's head that perfectly. We gotta really? find that. I want that. I, I want, want that a picture too. of that it head. Like it was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. It, was it, was perfect. it was perfect. That really happened. It looked like motherfucking it you. It was you. She was, I, mean, I remember walking in the bathroom like, and there was New Year's Eve puke. <laughs> not not on the floor. There was like an inch on the floor, but there was puke off of the walls, like dripping down the walls, and the urinal was like like somebody just bazooka barfed all over the whole. And I remember just walking in and be like, "This is like out of a horror so movie." Cute. Move your asses, you motherfuckers! Yeah! Jack me up! Jack me up! Sex <laughs> in the sun. Sex in the sun. Oh yeah, sex in the sun. Sex. In that cat ended up having like a dr like having like a like <laughs> a drug problem. like fucking night of drugs. Like I remember the next morning I woke up and it like drank all the fucking tea and like ate the tea bag <laughs> shit. Like I remember trying to get my tea from it and it went like fucking. I, and I remember being all like, this fucking cat's gonna kill me. 
they like put that thing out, it climbed up the chimney of the house <laughs> and smash this cat smashed the window out of the the, the bathroom that. window. Yeah. Came back in and came down and went right after the <laughs> man. The time we were in, I think it was Minnesota or somewhere, we were like, oh, this is kind of a pretty campground. It's not great, it's not bad. And then we looked and there was a ditch in the back and me and Eric oh, went, Eric yeah. fell in the ditch. Oh, I remember it was oh, dusk. God. Is that dusk when the, oh, the sun's going down? Oh, God. And it's not, it wasn't dark, it wasn't light. Eric got up and man, you were phosphorescent. Like, it was phosphorescent, remember that? Cause yeah. that was basically <clears throat> right across the river was like a sewage yeah. treatment plant where they were floating fucking shit down the river. <laughs> but it was weird cause it was kind of <laughs> hidden until I fell in. Yeah, it looked but pretty we until you saw it. It was really yeah. hot and we wanted to go in the water. Yeah. And then I slipped and fell down and I woke up. Honestly though, what was it like? <coughs> Within like half an hour, I was you deathly ill. Yeah, yeah you so were sick bad. Like, for like three days, days man. Yeah. Actually, we, that was when we ended up canceling like a show too. Didn't we like go to Madison? Or which was yeah, we had, can that was we had to cancel a show. It was like one of the only times we had to do that. <laughs> and you were like, I'm fine. And then we were like, we got It was like it was kind of cool. It was the first time all these bands did it together. Every few cities, they'd be ro remember the rotating bands like Wolf, what was it, Wolf Eyes, Blood Brothers, all the fucking like rotating. It was just cool because it was like this tour. It was going to different cities, but then it'd be different bills. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and made the whole thing like this this like a uh, concrete thing it was like a real you know like yeah. put it in a pack of and then everybody else stand it and then everybody else went off and made their careers and we broke up <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're in competition but then you realize you're all doing the same fucking thing and then you realize by everybody like doing it together it elevates the whole thing you know? really good for you guys I mean we were touring around places in Europe and people were losing their fucking minds like it was crazy there were girls like screaming and just going crazy at these shows like you were the goddamn Beatles they were buying me drinks like like I was somebody important like and I was just the fucking t-shirt guy it's alright you know I just really liked you guys playing together on stage and that sort of chemistry and after all that 
there was sort of like a uh, couple week hiatus, and then I know you did, guys did that tour with the Locust, the Lightning Bolt, that whole thing that was put together by Brian Peterson. And after that, there was this news that you guys broke up, and it was just like, it was just done. And it was this little thing where it was like, John, I want to break it to you, but it's over. And I was seriously about to cry. And I really feel like our artistic statement was bookended in a very interesting way. Like, we crawled out of the gutter, played this righteous shit, made it to a pinnacle where we basically own the shit, you know what I mean? And total confidence. You can actually make something out of nothing. Because we had shit. And then we somehow whipped up this fucking theory. And, and I'm completely happy with stopping when we did rather than continuing.